Whether you like going in loud, guns a-blazing, or prefer to sit back and pick off foes with a few well-aimed shots, there is no substitution for that perfect weapon. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we're diving back into Outriders and checking out each of the weapon archetypes to help you figure out what gun is the perfect choice for you. Outriders may be all about the anomaly powers, but when things are stuck on cooldown, you'll have to rely on your skills with a gun to keep enemies at bay. We spent hours testing out each gun type, learning when and where they may be the best choice for you. Each brings something uniquely different to the table, and while some may resonate with your personal playstyle, others may be a bust. So let's dive in and check them all out. Now, I should mention that we do not have access to the different weapon variants in the demo. That's the crafting system that allows us to manipulate the functionality of each weapon. We'll be focusing on the weapon archetypes as they are presented in the demo ahead of launch. And of course, we'll revisit this video idea once the game fully releases. When it comes to high damage and rock solid reliability, there is no better gun than the assault rifle. A staple in most games, we don't really need to spell out what this weapon is, but there are a few things we should point out. The assault rifle has a relatively small clip with just 40 bullets, and this is significant since similar weapons like the double gun and light machine gun have much more substantial magazine capacity. What the assault rifle lacks in ammo count, it makes up for in accuracy and stability, easily being one of the most reliable guns in the game. This is of course no surprise, but assault rifles are about as noob friendly as it gets, touting decent damage, a fast reload time of just 1.5 seconds, and a decent rate of fire. What is surprising is the assault rifle's effective range, which is a bit short at just 35 meters, making this a solid mid-range choice, but clearly limited when conflicts extend beyond that range. In practice, the weapon has a strong recoil that players will have to control. The weapon pulls upwards and shifts horizontally, making it a bit of a challenge to control, but the relatively small bullet spread means that if you can keep the crosshairs on your target, they'll hit more often than they miss. Assault rifles are the bread and butter of most gun-centric games, and with most of the encounters in Outriders taking place in semi-confined areas, I think it'll be a go-to for most players looking for the best bang for their buck on the battlefield. If you're interested in checking out one of the legendary assault rifles in the game, take a look at our video for the Voodoo Matchmaker, already up on the channel. Take the assault rifle, up the magazine size to 60, and extend the range and you have the double gun, an interesting twist on an automatic weapon that honestly felt a bit redundant. It shoots faster, further, but lags behind when it comes to damage, reload speed, which is longer than even the light machine gun, and reliability. The recoil is probably one of the most unique things about this gun, pulling drastically on the horizontal plane while also drifting upwards, similar to the assault rifle, but less so. I do think the double gun is interesting, but ultimately lags behind the assault rifle. Extending the effective range to 50 meters is nice, but because it's less accurate and less stable, it's harder to hit those longer shots. And if you decide to shoot in bursts, well, you're not taking advantage of the gun's faster 750 RPM, which is substantially higher than the assault rifle. I think the double gun is best used as a support weapon to keep fire on enemies. Outriders is far from a tactical masterpiece, but having a buddy with a double gun means you'll most likely always have someone that can rotate targets and put a few bullets down range, and I think in the grand scope of things, that's where we'll see this weapon truly shine. The third of three main automatic assault style weapons, the light machine gun, should be no stranger to players that have dabbled in any gun game before. This weapon features the biggest mag size of 100 bullets and actually outperforms the assault rifle and double gun when it comes to stability. After breaking down the numbers, I actually felt like the light machine gun may be the strongest of the three gun types we've talked about so far. It does shoot slower at just 500 rounds per minute, but features the same bullet damage 11 per round as the double gun, which is just two points less than the assault rifle. The reload time may be slower at 2.5 seconds, but it's still 0.2 seconds faster than the double gun and while the crit multiplier is just a bit lower at 110%, you're getting 40 more bullets per magazine and you can't sleep on that. Now, I don't want you to think the LMG is the end-all be-all when it comes to guns and Outriders because there is one major drawback, and that, of course, is the recoil and bullet spread, which is substantial. Talk about spray and pray, if you hold down the fire button, you're going to have a hard time hitting anything here. Since we're not really tapping into the RPMs, a burst fire mindset is going to be incredibly effective and ultimately the best way, in my opinion, to get the most out of this gun type. 
If you're interested in checking out one of the legendary light machine guns in the game, take a look at our video for the Grim Marrow already up on the channel. Next up, let's talk about the submachine gun, another staple in most looter shooters. This gun excels in close encounters where every bullet matters. Submachine guns shoot the fastest, touting 857 rounds per minute, as well as a 150% crit multiplier, which means it's also one of the most deadly weapons if you can keep it trained on enemies' weak points. Another surprise with the submachine gun is that the mag size is actually bigger than the assault rifle. You're getting 10 extra bullets, and that could mean the difference between life and death. Now, of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The SMG has slightly lower bullet damage and way less accuracy and range, making it a tough gun to use without practice. You'll also notice in our fire test that the gun has a rather wicked vertical recoil and bullet spread is a big issue. Long story short, this gun is meant to be used at close range. I know, what a concept. I think tricksters and devastators may find these guns match the playstyle of those classes best, and as someone that's been going hard with the trickster in the demo, I can tell you this is absolutely the case. Let's change gears and talk about rifles. There are three different types in Outriders, and each has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. We're going to start with the standard non-scoped rifle, which functions as a high-damage, high-skill weapon, and honestly, it's probably one of my favorites in the game right now. Rifles are semi-automatic weapons that feature incredible damage per bullet, a whopping 250% crit multiplier, and an effective range that extends to 180 meters. There are, of course, some drawbacks, specifically the small mag size, the lower rate of fire, and slower reload speed, but I do believe the pros outweigh the cons here. With the right modifications, and I'm sure with the right tweaks from crafting, standard rifles deal out an insane amount of damage, especially if you're accurate. Tapping into the 250% crit multiplier is a game changer, and believe it or not, during most of my demo farming, I used a rifle because you're not looking down a long scope. You can quickly get off shots without ever feeling like you're exposed, and once you do get the hang of the firing mechanic, it's relatively easy to mow down groups of enemies. Rifles may not be for everyone, but if you're accurate and really want to watch heads roll, we're pretty confident that the rifle is the best weapon available when it comes to overall DPS. With the right mods and the right skill, we were able to take down bosses in just a few seconds, and that's not something we can replicate with any other gun. Rifles aren't designed for one class in particular, and I think each of the four classes in the game could get some serious use out of rifles. One of the other selling points of this weapon is the fact that the bullet spread is next to nothing. While firing at a wall, you can see that without any manipulation, the sight picture never really changes, which means you have total control over where your bullets go. That's a big plus for anyone that struggles with recoil and aiming, and yet another reason why this weapon is one of my go-tos. If you're interested in checking out one of the legendary rifles in the game, take a look at our video on Rarog's Gaze, already up on the channel. Slap a scope on a rifle and you've got yourself a sniper. In all seriousness, the next weapon type I want to check out is the Bolt Action Sniper Rifle, which functions exactly how you'd imagine. Features include a smaller mag size, a slow rate of fire, longer reload times, but on the flip side, we're talking about some seriously high damage and a high crit multiplier. Personally, I don't really enjoy the way snipers are designed in Outriders. The Bolt Action variety we're talking about here pales in comparison to the standard rifle, and even falls short of competing with the automatic sniper rifle, which we'll talk about here shortly. Bullet damage is high, which is nice, but it still feels undertuned when you consider how much more accessible other guns are in the game. Bolt action rifles are designed for co-op play, there's no doubt about that. A Technomancer in the back line picking off enemies is wonderful, but in solo play, it just can't keep up with the hordes of enemies the game is throwing at you. Yes, you're getting 200 meters of effective range and 100% weapon accuracy, but it's that mag size that really restricts the player. Another strange thing about bolt-action rifles is that the crit multiplier is actually the lowest of the three rifles, and at just 200%, it feels like we're being cheated out of damage. I will say, hitting enemies is pretty simple in this game, especially because enemy movement is predictable, but there are still far too many drawbacks that make it hard for me to ever recommend this weapon type in its current state. A reminder, things may change with the introduction of the crafting system, but for now, it's at the bottom of the barrel, at least for me. If you were looking to change up your gunplay experience, might I suggest the long-range automatic sniper rifle, a really interesting take on the genre's classic archetypes. This weapon features a stunning 300% crit multiplier, which is easily the centerpiece of its design. While that number is high, of course there are trade-offs. Bullets deal less damage, and you sacrifice a bit of effective range, but that doesn't make this gun any less effective. The automatic sniper is basically a burst assault rifle with a long-range scope. I think that's the best way to think about it. 
Hitting headshots equates to some astronomical numbers, and with the right mods, these guns are just straight up silly. I will say that shooting one of these weapons isn't incredibly satisfying, it just feels a bit fake, and while it does perform well, it doesn't function as you'd expect. It's one of those weapons you need to get the feel for yourself. You may find that you love it, or you may find that it's not the right weapon for you. Moving back into close range, let's take a look at an old favorite, the pump action shotgun, a staple of shooters since the Duke Nukem days. What's there really to say here? You're getting incredibly high damage, but the trade-off is a small mag size, low rate of fire, and minuscule effective range. Pump action shotguns also feature a rather paltry 125% crit multiplier, which makes headshots less valuable than if you were using another weapon type. Shotguns also feature an explosive recoil, but the cool thing is that the game automatically snaps your character back to your original firing position, so as long as you don't knee-jerk and overcorrect, it's relatively easy to keep targets in your sight picture. I will say the real star of the pump action shotgun is that overall damage, which is the second highest baseline in the game, but there are enough restrictions on the weapon that it doesn't make it outright overpowered. I think tricksters, devastators, and maybe even more overzealous pyros will pick these up as secondary weapons, but I'm not so sure anyone will be maining one, at least not without some killer mods. Our final primary weapon is the automatic shotgun, and let me tell you, these things are an absolute blast to use. With a decent mag size, high rate of fire, and surprisingly high accuracy and stability, this is the perfect weapon for anyone that likes to get up close and personal with every type of enemy. The trade-off here is that you're not getting a whole lot of damage per shot, but because you can string an insane number of shots together, I think ultimately you're going to see more value using this than the pump action shotgun. You also have the smallest effective range at just 10 meters, and the crit multiplier is just as bad as it is with the pump action shotgun. The good news is that there's a lot less pressure to hit every single shot with the automatic shotgun because you have more rounds and a magazine to rely on. On the flip side, you're not doing as much damage, so you have to be consistent or you'll just end up wasting ammo. This is really just a fun weapon to use whether you're playing solo or in a group. Combined with some of the anomaly abilities in the game, the frantic nature of the weapon type just fits the overall pace of play in Outriders, and I think it's a fantastic addition to the game. We've got two more weapon types to discuss, the sidearms, which are actually rather impressive guns that feature unlimited ammunition. We also know that there are legendary sidearms in the game like Torment and Agony, which we've covered on the channel, so if you want to see them in their most elevated forms, definitely go check out that video. The first sidearm I want to talk about is the Revolver, which features a six-shot magazine, a high crit multiplier, and impressive damage. I actually think the Revolver rivals some of the primary weapons in the game, and I can't wait to find a legendary variation of this weapon type because, in action, it performs exceedingly well. Of course, you're not getting a lot of spare bullets to play with, and the rate of fire is rather slow, so accuracy is king. But if you're the type of player that likes rifles, you'll feel right at home with the Revolvers. To show you just how effective this weapon type can be, I took on one of the more challenging bosses in the demo, and as you can see, the revolver has no problem cutting through anything that gets in my way. I should point out that the revolver features a relatively limited range at just 20 meters, so it's best to use this weapon in conjunction with other short-ranged weapons. It may feel like you can make this gun work at long range, but sadly, its value starts to depreciate the further away from your targets you are. That being said, in the right scenarios, revolvers absolutely slap. Last but not least, let's talk about Dual Pistols, a fun automatic sidearm variation that gives players a bit more flexibility at the cost of performance. Pistols feature a solid 34-round magazine, have moderate bullet damage, and are surprisingly accurate and stable for automatic weapons. What you give up, however, is a bit of speed when it comes to reloading, and that all-important crit multiplier which rounds out at just 120%. I do think pistols are a bit more noob-friendly and definitely fits the player that likes the ease of use when it comes to automatic weapons, but they perform just fine in most situations. I should also point out that using your sidearms may not be that big of a thing in the game, because unlike games like Remnant from the Ashes where ammo conservation is something you actively have to manage, you can pretty much empty your reservations in Outriders and find a resupply point right around the corner. It makes for some less interesting gameplay, but it does inform how you can use your weapons in the moment-to-moment -moment combat. Remember, this is just an intro to the various gun types in the game, and once Outriders crafting system is officially launched with the full release, there will be a lot more to consider. Finding that right gun to match your playstyle is important, but it's the mods, variants, rarity, and upgrades that will ultimately determine the ceiling for how effective a gun can be. There's a lot more to dive into, but rest assured we'll be covering it all in future videos. So now that you know a bit about each weapon type, what is the right gun for you? 
I'd love to know your thoughts on the various weapons in Outriders and which guns you plan on using when the game launches on April 1st. Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and while you're down there, consider hitting that thumbs up and of course subscribing to the channel. It's completely free for you and it really does help us out a ton. You can also join us on Discord. We have a great community of around 6,000 members with a special section dedicated to Outriders. So if you're looking for people to team up with or just want to share some of your tips and tricks, check out the link below and join today. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.